What's up, familia? I'm Johnny Rivera, and today we're exploring one of the oldest Puerto Rican delicacies and practices, coquito making. In a Puerto Rican household, nothing screams holidays and celebration more than, you know it, coquito. Whether you're on the island or off, this creamy, rich cocktail has been around for generations. The origins are debated, and the recipe differs from person to person. And listen, I don't just enjoy the drink, your boy knows a thing or two about making coquito too. I started Brooklyn Coquito back in 2012 and I haven't stopped making batches ever since. But of course, I'm not alone in the game. They're major OGs and up-and-comers making big moves in the world of coquito. So have you ever sipped on some coquito and wondered, Acho, quien lo hizo? Get ready, cause we're sitting down with some coquito makers and diving deep into their stories. I've heard about you for a while, you know, Debbie right. Quinones, Coquito Masters. How did you start the Coquito Masters? You know, I had went to culinary uh, cooking school, Cordon Bleu cooking school, and what I decided to do was to apply like wine tasting uh, to Coquito. You know, people were asked to look at the consistency, um, the color, the kick, and the flavor. It went from my house to um, Casabe House, which is a senior citizen center. And then it went to Bonito, which was a bar in East Harlem. And we had, you know, the, the crowd started getting bigger and bigger. Got it. And then when we got to the Museo de Barrio in 2007, that was the turning point. Got it. Because that was when 48 coquito makers came and 600 people showed up. We've elevated the concept of coquito um, as something that people understand has a, a level of excellence. Got it. The most interesting thing about coquito that, that I love is that all of the ingredients have a migratory history, right? Yes. Where the cinnamon comes from India, the yes. coconut comes from China. You know, all of the ingredients kind of landed in Puerto Rico representing colonialism yes. to a certain degree, right? right. So, so, so here we are, a colonized people, and we take the, these ingredients and we transform them mm. into something that's resilient. Well, that was awesome information. Thank you for that. So you had my coquito. I think it's about that time that we go in the kitchen and uh, make some of yours. I would love to taste it you and know, get you some know, of your that, history. You know, that's good because I, you know, not to, not to brag, but I have won the contest. I'm Amazing. Just, I'm just saying. I your won, own I, contest. I, I did win my own contest and then I had to remove myself <laughs> Because, you know, it's just not fair. Oh, that's awesome. I'm excited. <laughs> I'm excited. Let's do it. Thank you so much. I'm super excited for you to join us. So far as the, the, the tea has been made with the coconut water. Okay. Um, leche condensada, evaporated milk. Um, and then this is for flavoring, you know, where it's ginger, cloves, and orange peel. Okay. And cinnamon and anise. Nice. So that's the tea. Got it. Right, you start with that and then you add the evaporated milk, the, the cream of coconut, the coconut milk, and you let that simmer for a bit. And then what I do is, you know, I. I take the coconut and I grate it and stuff. Yeah. And then what I do is I make like a masa. You grate it de mano. Yes. There's two schools. There's the, the blender school and then the the other school. Crapando school. Yeah. So going back to Doña Ocasia. Yes. The night before, or even a week before, she would take the coconut and then she would add spices, which I'm not going to tell you, of course, right? Because that's the, the family secret. Of course. Um, with rums and all different type of stuff and let this simmer. So that then it becomes like the meat of it. So you may want to take away from this. Mm. Yeah. Hey, that smells sweet. Yeah. It smells sweet. Um, so we're going to put this in um, about half. Some people like really heavy, like a lot. Mano suelta is what they call it, right? Like mano I, I guess so, because <laughs> it's like, you know, my co and that's what the other thing is like, I don't like a coquito that's a hammer. Yeah. I want to be seduced. Right, because coquito is something that, for me, right, it's 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 something that comes after after dinner. You want to enjoy it. It's sweet, yeah. you know, it's coconut, there's vanilla, there's leche condensada. I want to taste the rum, but I want the rum to come after. You ready? Salud. Cheers. Buen provecho. 
I like to chew a little bit. I like to have the coconut. Yeah, I'm chewing the coconut right now. I love coconut. Maybe I put a little bit too much. Mm. But when it gets cold, it'll get frothy. Wow. And you got the kick. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, Debbie, thank you so much for sharing your legacy, sharing the importance of what it means to, to be the, the Coquito master that you are and and keeping pushing the culture forward the coquito culture forward because that's what this is all about and it is you. we have to embrace the evolution of coquito but also maintain our traditions Absolutely. and that's the most important that's what thing. it's about and i think i went a little so heavy that, on the coconut but you know it's what? all good it's I'm all okay. good we're good we're here i'm we're drinking mm. to your health cheers